nasirin wa amma فيوفيهم أجورهم والله لا يحب الظالمين ذلك خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون الحق من ربك فلا تكن من الكافرين صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace and the blessings of Allah upon all of you Brothers and sisters in Islam, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you one and all here tonight to the lecture by Mr. Ahmad Didat on the topic Crucifixion, X-I-O-N, or Crucifixion, C-T-I-O-N. We leave the judgment to you after Mr. Didat has delivered this lecture. This is but one of a series of lectures on similar or related topics. We still have two more lectures after tonight. That is Al-Quran, the visual miracle, the Athlone Civic Center to, on Monday evening, and on Tuesday evening in Kensington Civic Center is Jesus God we invite you to those lectures too Mr. Ahmad Didat at this day and age needs no introduction we all know he's from Durban it's borne out by the fact that he doesn't speak Afrikaans he's a banana boy he has just returned from an extensive Arab country tour lecturing on these very topics. We are indeed fortunate to have such a man in our midst and such a man who is so willing to answer our call when he came from his extensive tour. I am sure you didn't come to listen to me so I will now ask Mr. Ahmad Dida to take the floor. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل جاء الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين ولا يزيد الظالمين إلا خسارة صدق الله صدق الله مرنازيم 
Mr. Chairman, and my dear brothers and sisters. On the subject of the crucifixion, the Muslim is told in no uncertain terms in the Holy Quran, the last and final revelation of God. He is told in chapter 4, verse 157. That they didn't kill him and they did not crucify him. But it was made to appear to them so. That is what they thought they had done, the Jews. And those who dispute therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge. They're only following conjecture, guesswork, fiction. For the surety, they killed him not. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, could anyone have been more explicit, more dogmatic? more uncompromising in rejecting the dogma of a faith than this? The answer is impossible. The only one who could afford to do such thing would be the almighty, omnipotent, omniscient Lord of the universe. He is the only one who is entitled to speak in such terms. They only follow conjecture. Guess what? Fiction. The Muslim believes in this authoritative statement of the Holy Quran as of God from Allah Bari Ta'ala Himself. Hence, he asks no questions and he seeks for no proof. He says, My Lord saith, This is what my Lord says, Amanna Saddakna. We hear and we affirm. To this Muslim attitude, the Christian retorts that we do not accept your book, the Holy Quran, as of God, and as such it holds no authority for us. And they further reason that how can a man a thousand miles away from the scene of the happenings of the alleged crucifixion and 600 years away in time tell us what happened in Jerusalem some 600 years before. We say that this is from God, the omnipotent, omniscient, the all-knowing. He knows and he has revealed this knowledge to his messenger Muhammad. The Christian says, had we believed in these statements, of the Quran as of God, then there would have been no problem. We would all have been Muslims. And that is actually what would have happened. If they believe that this is Allah's Kalam, they would be all Muslims. They say, further claim, that we have written records in our scriptures of eyewitnesses and your witnesses to the happenings. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, if the Christian reacts against the Muslim attitude, if he reacts strongly, we can understand. Because his salvation depends upon this belief. To him, this is the most important thing of his religion. As Saint Paul, the self-appointed 13th apostle, the self-appointed 13th apostle of Jesus Christ, as he claims in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14, he says, If Christ is not risen from the dead, 